Hey everyone, uh, Tony Winston here, Jazz Piano College. You know, a couple of days ago I was trying to come up with something I haven't done already on YouTube, and I thought, well, The Shadow of Your Smile is a beautiful song. I don't think we've worked on that. And so I started working on my, my own arrangement, kind of, and I, I, you know, I started off in the real book key, which I guess is like uh, um, key of G major. And I thought, well, how could I reharmonize that? And I came up with a few ideas. Like that. Um, and I tried to get a little motion going here, but I really don't think it works. Oh, it's all right. chord there and I thought that was kind of a nice change there and then go to like a, a C sharp 11 and then you know I, I got this little chord progression here thought, well, that's not even the right chords. It doesn't even end on the right chord. And where did I even get that from? Then I remembered a few weeks ago, uh, my wife and I were working on this song by Billy Joel, uh, Good Night, My Angel, Time to Close Your Eyes, whatever that song is. And it's got a lot of that kind of harmony going on in it. And I thought, well, that's exactly where that, come from, that came from. And it just kind of subtly crept into my arrangement. So there I, I, I went ahead and went with it. <laughs> And here, you know, I've always wanted to try to find ways to get from this chord down to the C sharp chord with four different chords, like one, two, three, but then you're always there one chord too soon. So I came up with this. All right, so kind of like an E minor, an E minor with the, with the bass descending and then kind of a suspended chord going into G. And then that kind of takes you to the next chord. And then I went to this C major seventh. Now, there's no music theory way that C major 7 goes to F sharp minor, but I just thought it sounded nice. And then, you know, a few days later, I'm, I'm going down my Facebook uh, feed, and I see somebody's posted the uh, theme song to the Sandpiper, uh, you know, the movie and the opening credits. And uh, so I gave that a listen, and then I realized that the trumpet player had just passed away, Jack Sheldon, a wonderful trumpet player who plays the lead on that. And so I listened to it and realized it's in a different key, and then I thought, well, I'll just lift that arrangement. It's so good. And then right at the very beginning, it starts exactly that same way. Uh, it goes to like a G major seventh, plays the melody, and then goes to C sharp. Right? So it's in a different key, but that's the exact same progression. And I thought, wow, uh, I feel good that I came up with a, a same harmonic idea there that uh, Johnny Mandel, who wrote the song, and I believe wrote that arrangement, but I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, I felt good that, that I came up with the same thing there. And uh, so I kind of abandoned work on my own arrangement there. But let's see, what else did I kind of come up with? I went to like the G major and then see that's G major kind of turning into that B minor 7 flat 5 it's really just still G7 but you know B minor 7 flat 5 takes you to E
I thought that was a nice little kind of a interlude maybe to put between the verses or as an intro, this little E-flat thing. were my ideas. But let me talk about this uh, arrangement um, from the movie. It's really beautiful. Starts off with these nice little chords. You know, following the key signature of two sharps and just kind of scaling through the chords there. And then, and then some more of the same thing. And then one more time. It's a real kind of something's going to happen. And then he throws in this big dissonance here and then resolves to that beautiful major seventh chord. And it kind of wanders around a little bit. That's from something. <laughs> There's another song uses that arrangement exactly. And once again, that G major seventh. That's such a beautiful uh, suspended chord there. I call it an F sharp 11. And then going to all those dissonances. That's always such a nice way if you're descending like this, instead of just playing B minor and putting like an A in the bass like that, uh, go to F sharp minor. It's a little more classical. Now, one thing I did notice about this arrangement is that, you know, the core, if you're going to, you know, uh, transcribe it for piano, uh, a lot of the chords sit here, and then the trumpet melody is way up here. Now, on piano, you usually try to voice chords so that if you have a big interval, it's going to be down here in the bass. And then everything else, you know, it's got to be pretty close like this. But I found that, you know, this song sounds pretty good if you kind of break that rule and, you know, play the chords down here or even really low here and just keep that melody way up there on top. I mean, it's hard to do because you can't really reach it. And this was such a nice chord. Usually, you know, you want to have the melody on top, but here you have this 13 way up there, which gets flatted. So you have to, have to be careful not to play that one too loud and bring out the melody, which is right in the middle. So... Another nice 11th chord. And right here it should, you know, the melody should have already come back in, but it's like an extra bar just to get to that super spacey G major uh, seventh chord before the melody comes in again. So there, that's a little bit reminiscent of that intro where it comes in and has that real dissonant note right before the uh, melody starts. Once again, you know, you know, you've got like a chord down here and the melody way up here. Now here. I swear that comes right out of a uh, Wagner uh, opera. Wagner, we'll call him. We'll call him Wagner today. Um, you know, it's that chord, that really famous chord. I'll, I'll do a little research and I'll inject it into the video here. Uh, so it's very cool. 
uh, right there. That's just, you know, not the way I would ever come up with myself right there. Just, I mean, you know, I've, you know come up with a G major to C dominant. That's, that's pretty typical, but to do it this way. Now, some of these chords are just too damn big, so, you know, you can make them smaller, like, like that, you know. Then you know it hits this thing, and all right now this is this is really cool. So uh, backing up just a second. I wish I could still hit that F sharp down there, but then you know we're going from F sharp to uh, F sharp seventh to B seventh. But the inner voices are moving like this in perfect fifths, okay? Breaking every counterpoint rule in the book. But um, now the nice thing about taking a lift like this is, you know, you get lots of good ideas and, uh, you know, you learn a little something about arranging and you also, um, you know, if you want to improvise on this song, it kind of gives you a kind of a starting point and some harmonic ideas that you can use when you're, when you're improvising. So uh, that's why I kind of like to do these things. And... Uh, you know, in terms of improvising on this song, I mean, why? It's such a beautiful song. Just play the melody. But, you know, if you have somebody who's uh, playing the, the melody or singing the melody um, and you want to put little fills in, you know, you have to have a little bit of practice improvising on the song. So practice, you know, playing the melody and putting some little fills in between or just improvising pure improvisation on it. And that way, you know, you'll feel... Uh, pretty relaxed and comfortable when it comes time to say accompany a vocalist or if you're lucky enough to accompany a wonderful trumpet player like the late uh, Jack Sheldon. So anyway hats off to him and Johnny Mandel for writing this beautiful song and I hope you enjoy the arrangement. You know <laughs> I'd, I'd love to sit there and you know put this into my my music software so you had a really nice copy but uh, unfortunately um, I just can't sit at my desk that long anymore. I need to get a stand-up desk or something. I will take a, a scan of these two pages. So uh, thanks again for tuning in, folks. Uh, please let me know what you would like to see a video on and consider uh, joining me on uh, Patreon. I have a Patreon page now if you'd like to contribute a few dollars. Uh, but uh, the most important thing, of course, is to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button and all that good stuff. So thanks. See you again soon.